Welcome to our Daily Boost today, and this is yours truly, Dr. Charles and Nathan here with another week, with another great program we have. I am so thankful to God that today we are starting a whole new series. It's called Maximized Living. Maximized Living. God is able to do what He has said. I want to encourage you today that you can join me and invite some friends. You want to share this with others, let them know that I am on. I know Alexander is back home and safe. God bless you. And Maka, God bless you. Hallelujah. Love you, love you. We have Tanya, we have Lena, and Elijah James. Good morning. Hallelujah. God bless you. And we have Shrijit. How are you? I missed you guys. I missed you guys. And I'm looking forward to another glorious morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. But I am looking forward to it. Let me know how the sound is, how the, how the video is. I want to make sure we get a good flow. And uh, we'll be improving on some things that we are doing. So, But I hope that you can enjoy today. And we are getting ready for something amazing to take place in your life. So I am talking about maximizing maximized living maximized living that's what I'm talking about today and we have Ron good, God bless you good morning we have Nita God bless you so I'll be talking about a subject that is, that is really one of my one of my excitement when I talk about it so this week is going to be an exciting week I want to encourage you let people know we are going to be on and uh, we'll bring you daily the daily boost and hopefully tomorrow we have the Q&A because we didn't do it last week because you guys didn't send me questions for me to have give you answers there must be some questions so you understand that so I hope you understand well praise God check us out on Facebook on Facebook my other pages my personal page this is my official page and Christ Love Ministries you can check that out and make sure you're uh, friends with that with me on uh, those uh, platform and also on Instagram, Dr. Charles and Lee you can check me out there. I'll be posting some up, up dates and some up and coming meetings so that you are going to be part of something excellent. God bless all of you. I'm so glad you joined me. Hello, Nisha. We're talking about maximized living. You have Kareem. Hallelujah. Praise God. Marlene, God bless you. So um, we have Annette. I want to make sure that all of you understand that for us to do the q and I need your input. If you can give me questions, I can give you answers. So I hope you understand what I'm talking about today. So we are talking about maximize living. That's what this whole week is all about. What happens when life is lived to the fullest? So I want to encourage you, go to my YouTube page and check out um, Dr. Charles and Defun, and please sub subscribe to the YouTube page. And I want to see your engagement today. And we have Don. God bless you. I'm so glad you joined me this morning. God bless all of you. So we are going to be talking about maximized living. And that's my topic for this week. I hope you will join me every single day this week for maximized living. Maximized living. And um, what does that mean? I'm talking about living life with a passion. Living life, a, a passion of living full and dying empty. A passion of living full and dying empty, where you can be in the place of your natural brilliance, where you can dream big. All oh, last week we were talking about think big, talk big, and act big, and that's what we're talking about. We started a week with something amazing, but this week I am talking about maximized living, maximized living. And what is it? Passion. Living life with a passion. So that's my topic for today. Living life with a passion. You see, passion is a secret of perseverance. When you're going through a tough time, the first thing you want to do is you want to know, hello, Fengi, God bless you. One thing you want to do when you're going through a tough time is passion will take you beyond where your skills can take you. Living life passionately. You see, I'm passionate about a lot of things, like playing basketball, I'm passionate, or like um, doing martial arts, playing soccer, and um, I love listening to all kinds of music. I'm very passionate about that. I love seeing people fulfill purpose and destiny. The reason I come every morning and talk to you is to help you get to the place of purpose and destiny. And I have my son, Willie Johnson. God bless you, Pastor Willie, all the way from Las Vegas. Hallelujah. So this week, I'm talking about maximum. Maximize living, maximize living, living life to the max. 
to the maximum. That means you want to live full and die empty. You want to live life without worrying about what people would say to you. Living life on the terms of God, living life to the place where you are so full and you are overflowing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. So what we're going to do is this morning I'm going to get started with that topic about living life passionately with a passion. So I said I love to read. You, some of you know that. I love to take in new knowledge. I love to, to experience new things. So I'm very passionate about living. So what is passion? In fact, I'm passionate about passion. Our passion is the energy that keeps us going. When things are tough, passion keeps us filled with meaning and happiness and excitement and anticipation. That's what passion can do for you. you see, passion is a powerful force. It is a powerful force in accomplishing anything you set your mind to do. So you have to understand that when you are passionate about things, something happens, you begin to experience work and life to the fullest extent possible. When you have passion, those are the things that become what drives you. So when you are passionate, passion will do something in you that a lot of things cannot do for you. Passion is where you ought to live. Ultimately, I can say passion is a driving force behind success and happiness that allows us to live life to the fullest. So you cannot be successful outside your place of passion. You'll be frustrated. You'll be, you'll be really, <laughs> you'll be really drained if you do not understand passion. You see, passion is a is a is a is a is an energy, is a force that helps you accomplish things even when times are tough. So if you don't live life with a passion, life becomes really a drag. Remember that time is a currency of life. How do you spend the time? Are you investing your time wisely or just spending it? What am I saying? Most things are issues of the heart. You see, most of us live life based on the issues of our heart. We've got to change those things and begin to live life not based about the emotions around us. Not everybody around us is really sent from God and sometimes they drain our passion into something else. We need to get our focus back on what God has called us to do. And when we do that, it starts up a, a chain reaction of passion. You see, a lot of people have, uh, a lot of people have wishes. They wish things can be different. Others have dreams, and the dream that, well, I hope something happens, you know. But then we have to go, a dream goes beyond just yourself. It must be bigger than yourself. There is nothing more paralyzing or more, more, more motivating as one's thoughts. Your thoughts can paralyze you, or your thoughts can motivate you. You see, you become what you think about always you always become what you think about it is very simple you become what you think about a lot of times people don't understand that their thought life determines their their life thoughts in other words that means everything you're thinking about becomes what you're projecting to your world you become what you think about if you don't know what you go where you're going you can never draw the road map See, one thing about passion, it begins when there's clarity of purpose. You cannot be passionate without clarity of purpose. You cannot be a passionate mechanic if you don't know that being a mechanic is what you are called to do. So most times, we have people that have passion in the wrong things. Okay, so let's keep, keep going. Remember that life is not a dress rehearsal. Life is not a dress rehearsal. It must be lived. You, you have to live life. Life is not a dress rehearsal. You have to live it. You really have to live it. That's what I'm talking about this morning. You see, big things don't just happen. They don't just happen. It happens when you make them happen. That means there's got to be purpose to what you're talking about. I hope this is helping you. I hope this is helping. Anders, God bless you. Hello from, from Denmark is Anders. God bless you. Listen, listen to me. See, Jesus, the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, the enemy comes, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life, 
and have it more abundantly. He wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to enjoy plenty. He wants to enjoy the fullness of everything. That's what God wants you to enjoy. But this is the question. God is not responsible for the opportunities that you don't recognize. God is not responsible for the opportunities you don't recognize. You see, a person with a little wisdom and a lot of passion will accomplish more than someone with a lot of wisdom but with little passion. You know, I don't like being around people that are not passionate. You've got to be passionate about something. A lot of times, people are more concerned about their, their, their little things and they lack passion. When a person of passion walks in, you can tell. When a person of passion leaves the room, you can tell also. You see, when you live life, hallelujah, God bless you, Harriet, watching from Greece, God bless you. I am passionate about living. Life is not a dress rehearsal. I am passionate about living and sharing with you and seeing people come to their fullest potential. The reason why I get up every day, I don't want to come to you through the medium of Facebook and uh, maybe television for those that will be watching us on TV, is because I believe that your finest days are here. Your best times are here. I believe that God wants to do something in your life that is really worth doing. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping somebody today. I hope this is helping somebody. I'm talking about maximized living, living life to the fullest, living life to the fullest and then dying on empty. That means at the end of life, you have no regrets. I like that. At the end of life, you really have no regrets. You've lived life to the fullest. You have this one life to live, live it to the fullest. I hope this is helping somebody. So the Bible says that John chapter 10 verse 10, Jesus says, I am come that you can have life. You might have life and have it overflowing. God wants you to have an overflowing life, a life that overflows, overflows. That means a life that is filled and overflowing. And then Jesus adds a powerful statement in Luke chapter 12 verse 49. He says this, he said, I've come to set the world on fire. <laughs> I like that. I've come to set the world on fire. One tra tra trans translation says, the Catholic translation says, he says, I've come to light a fire in your heart. People today, that's the hashtag, hashtag today is fire in my heart. I'm burning with a passion today. Hallelujah. I am burning with a passion today. He says, I've come to light a fire in your heart. And I wish that that fire is kindled. Wow. <laughs> I love it. He said, I wish that that passion, that fire comes alive. That's what he's talking about. He said, I wish that that passion is kindled. I like that. You see, God wants to do something extraordinary he wants to do something fresh in you but he comes with a fire and the heart which is passion what we call fire is passion burning on the inside of you I wish today you can be ignited you can be ignited with that fire of God hallelujah hallelujah you can be ignited with that fire on the inside of you you see a lot of times i hear people say things like i want you to share this with your other friends on facebook i share with as many people as possible because today is the day the fire comes on your heart the fire comes on the inside of you i hope you understand what i'm talking about today so when i'm talking about some things people don't understand why i'm so passionate you see i hate seeing wasted potential I don't like seeing potential wasted. I like to maximize. When I see somebody that's not maximizing their potential, that's one of the things I'm called to do is to help people maximize their potential. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. You see, we have to understand that there are certain things in life that we need to fix. I want to tell you what some famous people have said concerning passion. Listen to this. Every, this is by Harriet Tubman. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. That's Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman said that. And then Nelson Mandela said this. 
There is no passion to be found playing small. There is no passion found playing small in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. Oh my God, my God, my God. Are you hearing me? He says there is no passion to be found in playing small. That was why I said to you last week, think big. There is no passion in playing small. In settling for a life that is less than the one you're capable of living. You see, sometimes we are stuck in things. We are stuck in relationship. We are stuck without passion. We've got to come to the place where we are operating with full passion. Hallelujah. You see, when I say this, I'm saying this because I know there's somebody listening to me today that that fire is falling on you today. The passion is burning again in your soul. Some people stay in a job they don't like. They stay in, they stay in places where nothing is happening. you got to shake yourself up and let that fire burn within you again. I hope it's helping somebody. Fire on the inside. Hallelujah. I want you to put the hashtag fire on the inside. You know, fire on the inside. Put that hashtag somebody. Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about. Or you can just put fire in my belly. <laughs> I like those kind of hashtags. Put some of those things on fire in my belly there is something jesus said he said i've come to set the world on fire i've come to set your heart on fire i wish it will catch on hallelujah that's what i'm talking about today i wish it will catch on. and then anthony j d'angelo said this develop a passion for learning if you do you cease to grow he says, if you do, you will never cease to grow. That's what he says. Develop a passion for learning. For if you do, you will never cease to grow. And then Oprah, Oprah said this. Winfrey said this. Passion is energy. I like that. Passion is energy. Feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you. Hallelujah. What excites you. Today is a new day. We have Pastor Ojiji. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. Hallelujah. <laughs> fire on the inside. That's what I'm talking about. Living today with fire, with passion coming out of your pores. Passion coming out of every part of your being today. That's what I'm talking about. See, Oprah, um, uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin said this. If passion drives you, let reason hold the reins. If you're driven by passion, also let reason control the passion. That means reason based on vision and purpose. Let purpose and, and, and vision become what holds the reins. Passion should drive you. Hallelujah. And then Jean-Paul Sartre said, says this. We must act passion before we can feel it. He must act passion. I used to remember in, uh, in the Virgin Islands with Pastor Ode uh, uh, Adele and Ordain uh, Brown, my precious brother and sister. I love them very much in the Virgin Islands. When we went there in uh, 1999, I believe, and we had our first miracle crusade in St. Thomas. Hallelujah. That's almost, my goodness, almost 20 years ago, my God. <laughs> and we, we, the whole thing, it was on the newspaper, tremendous miracles that happened. I remembered Lisa that used to lead worship there. She, she will say this. He says, in order to be enthusiastic, you must act enthusiastic. Oh boy, am I enthusiastic. I love it. I love it. He said, in order for you to, to be enthusiastic, you must act enthusiastic. Oh boy, am I enthusiastic. I like that. I remember those days. <laughs> I remember those days and I, you never left me. Can you imagine over 20 years ago? I still remember that because I love passion. You've got to be passion, passionate. If you're singing, sing with all of your heart. If you're working, work with all of your heart. If you're doing things, I don't care what I'm doing, whether I like it or not, I got to put my passion into it. You see, passion will take you beyond where your skills will take you. You see, I, I, think, I think about two world-renowned players that have won the World Footballer of the Year over and over and over. Ronaldo and Messi. Both of them world-class players, 
in the last 10 years, they have been the premier players in the world. One has won in five years, the other one has won in five years. But you know the difference between Ronaldo and Messi? Messi would have won for 10 straight years. Messi has more skills than Ronaldo does. I mean, Ronaldo has a lot of skills, but Messi has incredible gifts. But he's not as passionate as Ronaldo. Ronaldo is very disciplined, very passionate. You don't see him do a lot of things that others do because he understands that passion will take you beyond where your dreams, where, you, where, you, where your skills would ever take you. Now, hear this. T.S. Eliot said this. It is obvious that we can do, we can no more explain a passion to a person who has never experienced it than we can explain light to the blind. You cannot explain light to the blind, neither can you explain passion to somebody that has never experienced passion. You understand what I'm saying? John, uh, John Bon Jovi, Bon Jovi says this. He says, nothing is as important as passion. You know the musician. He said, no matter what you want to do with your life, be passionate. Be passionate. You see, a lot of times you go to Christians, you go to believers, some of them are living life without passion. They're living life so afraid of living. My goodness, they are afraid of living. Good morning, Sharon. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, some people, are, uh, they, they are so afraid of living life that they become paralyzed in their living. God never intended for, for your life to be a paralyzing existence. He expected life to be full of passion. I hope you understand what I'm talking about today. So I'm talking about passion. You see, Barbara Cochran, one of the ladies in, uh, in the, in the uh, Shack Tank, a well-known entrepreneur, that a businesswoman made millions and millions of dollars. She said this, you can't fake passion. You can't fake passion. If somebody is passionate, they'll be passionate. It's like this. I'm teaching and some people are focusing on problems. Don't focus on problems. Focus on the message. It will solve your problem. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you hearing me today, people? I'm talking about living life full of passion. Maximize your living. Maximize living. That's my topic for the week maximize living so i want to come to you today and bring all that i'm talking about to you it is exciting living it's an exciting day we are living in hallelujah so i hope you understand my drift today you know steve jobs said this you have to be burning with an idea or a problem or a wrong that you want to write if you're not passionate enough from the start, you will never stick it out. In other words, I have said that passion is the secret of perseverance. How do you persevere when people have rejected you, when people have walked away from you, where people have said things about you, where this, it seems like the goals and the things you want to accomplish is not being accomplished. It seems things are delayed. Delays are not denials. Passion will take you through that hump. Passion will take you through the things that has been st holding you back. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm talking about maximized living today and a whole week. Listen to me, folks. Why am I so passionate? Why am I so passionate? I can tell you a lot of things that can help you. But one of the things I want to I want to set something as we start off today. I, I hope this is helping somebody. This is what I want to give you. Ten things about the passion that God has called you to, to walk in. I said in Luke chapter 12, verse 49, Jesus said, I've come to set the world on fire. My question is, is your world burning with a passion or your world is just one boring existence? I hope it's not a boring existence. I hope your world is exciting. Hallelujah. It's big and bold and you're doing something exciting about it. Don't stay there and say, well, you don't understand what I've been through. No, I don't need to hear that. I want to see your passion. You cannot explain passion to a person that has never experienced it. You've got to come into a place of passion. So I want you to write this down. Ten things I've discovered about passion. Number one, the power of God will never operate in your life without your passion. 
The Bible talks so many times, it said that the zeal of the Lord's house has consumed me. There's a, there's a passion about it. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. There is passion in what God does. The Bible says, love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your strength. There's got to be passion in your love for God. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping somebody. I hope this is helping you. Because once you understand this passion, it changes the matrix of your life. I hope this is blessing somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Are you, are you hearing me? Hallelujah. And Zoe says she's passionate about seeing the sick healed. Of course, that's one of my things. You know what? I, I hate sickness around me. If somebody is sick, if some, something is going wrong, I want to be the first one that will shut that sickness down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ten things about passion. Number one, the power of God will not operate in your life without passion. Number two, what, whatever you respect will come to you. You see, there's something about passion that when you respect it, it, you become more passionate about it. So whatever you respect, it will come to you. Number three, whatever you criticize, see, your passion goes in the direction of your speech. Whatever you criticize will leave your life. When you are critical of something that is, is a passion, guess what happened? That thing no longer becomes a passion. Watch your words so that your words do not get you into a place of passivity. Hear this. Passion, it's the emotion that fuels dreams. It is the force that fuels dreams. It is the energy that fuels dreams. Just like your car needs fuel, your passion is what fuels dreams. A person with a dream but without passion is only a wishful thinker. It takes passion to move you from wishes to moving the dreams forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Circumstances should not define you. Don't let circumstances define you. Let your passion move you beyond your circumstance. That's something I learned about passion. You see, you, we, are go, we are going to go through things in life. The Bible says that the storms of life will come. You see, as believers, the Bible didn't say storms will not come. It says when the storms of life come, because you are built on the rock, you will withstand the storm. Crises are things that are put in life to cause you to be famous. I hope this is helping you. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping you. Now, let me go to number six. Your background does not make you a champion, but a fire that's on the inside of you. You can, you can come from a place where you have the wrong background, you have the, the wrong story, you have the wrong everything, but it is the fire on the inside, the passionate inside that makes you a champion. I've seen great fighters that very gifted, but they never were passionate about it. And it took a person that was more, that's why they say in sports, this person has a heart or has more passion. You see, if the, those with a heart, even when they are going down, they believe they will still win. Champions think like that. Champions have a passion that people don't understand. Every time I watch the New England Patriots, people might not like that team, but that's my favorite team. That's my hometown team. The New England Patriots with Tom Brady. You might not like it, but the guy, my God, is good. Every time they go to play a game and they are behind. See, you're not safe if you're up by 24 points and you have 10 minutes to go. Tom Brady and the New England Patriots will beat you. They will beat you. They have won so many games. That, so we expect them to win. They have a passion about them that they finish well. They don't just start passionately and they, then they fizzle out. They are passionate until you get to the whole thing. Hallelujah. Number four, I said passion is the energy that fuels your dream. Number five, don't allow circumstances to define your passion. In other words, don't let your circumstances define you or define the level of your passion. Number six, your background does not make you a champion, but the passion on the inside of you will make you a champion. Number seven, one act that is passionate can impact the multitudes. People can tell when you're passionate. It will impact people than a passionless action. 
Don't just do things. Listen to me. You might not like to do what you're doing, but do it with a passion. It will impact people just the same. Passion is energy. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping somebody. Passion is energy. You see, number eight. Passion will empower you to speak, to speak for your dreams. You will be projecting that to others. You'll be speaking that to others. You'll be doing great things with others. I hope this is helping everybody. I hope it's helping everybody. I want to keep rolling with this. Keep rolling with this. Number nine. Passion will mobilize people. I've never seen a person passionate that doesn't have followers. You can be passionate even in the wrong thing. You will still have followers. What is your passion? Come on, somebody. What is? What are you passionate about? Don't just stay there and pray and pray. Be passionate about something. And when you're passionate about things, things begin to happen. I am passionate about my God. Hallelujah. I am passionate about my God. So I'm telling you, last night and early this morning while I was thinking about what do I share with them? The Holy Spirit says, I want you to start a whole series called Maximize Living. That's what this week is all about. I'm giving this to you. You know I'm giving it to you for free. But I want you to know it cost me sometimes sleepless nights just to get this thing ready for you. I know you can appreciate a good thing when you see one. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes because I give it to people for free, this is what a lot of people pay money to hear. And I've thought many times, maybe I can just give a daily boost five minutes. But no, I'm passionate about your success. That's why I keep talking about this. I have such a passion for people that I cannot help it but pour out my life. I will say to you from the beginning, from the top, I am living life to the full. And I, when I'm done with my assignment, I will go empty. I'm not going to take anything with me when I go. Heaven does not need what I'm doing now Heaven is full of good stuff. So I need all the good stuff. I need to release out of everything God has called me to be. An author, uh, a, a healer of life, a builder of people, uh, a person that speaks to nations, that, that is a counselor to people, around, to leaders around the world. I want to fulfill all of that. I'm going to live life full. But when I'm done, I'll be empty. Hallelujah. I want to be in a state of constantly pouring out. Number nine, passion will mobilize people. Number 10, passion. It's not cultivated on the outside. It's cultivated on the inside. You've got to cultivate like you cultivate your, uh, a garden. You've, you've got to learn to cultivate passion. I hope this is helping you. Hallelujah. See, now I'm saying this because People need to be in a place of passion. If you're going to be part of my team, I expect passion. I don't like people that come in there and they have no passion. Ask anybody around me. Whenever I'm doing things, I'm full of fire. What Jesus said, he said, I've come to light the world on fire, to set the world on fire. Oh my God, I love that. In Luke chapter 12, verse 49, he said, I've come to set your heart to light. I've come to set your hearts on fire. That's Jesus saying, I want you to be passionate about something. I want you to be full of passion. And I wish that your hearts were kindled. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. I am so excited about this. I am so excited about this. Let us become people that are passionate. I want to end up with this quote today. See, before I do that, I want you to go to Christlove.org. I encourage people always, when something has blessed you, I want you to partner with us and uh, you can sow a seed. What, what does that mean? A seed a day will keep poverty away. How can you guarantee constant harvest in your life? Plant seeds daily. When you do that, something amazing takes place in your world. I'm telling you. See, when you're passionate about things, Passion always responds. Passion always responds. Passion will respond with rewards. Hallelujah. I hope you understand this. So, Albert Einstein. You see, this man was so talented, so gifted. He said this. He said, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. I like that. I, I wanted to end this talk today with that statement. Hallelujah. He says, I have no special talent. They are talented people. I say to people, I'm not the best preacher. 
but I'm passionate about what I know. I'm not a preacher. I'm a king with a message. I am passionate about coming to you today. I'm bringing you good news. That's what I'm passionate about. Hallelujah. So I am passionately curious. That's why that's why he, he I mean, the theory of re relativity is amazing. What Albert Einstein, we considered him the picture of a genius, but he said, I have no special talent. Let me explain to you. When I was growing up, a lot of people said to me, you must be a genius. I said to them, no. No, I'm just passionate about things. I was passionate about physics. I was passionate about chemistry. I was passionate about mathematics. I mean, I was studying additional math when I was, I mean, bef way, way, way before I was a teenager. I was studying all those things because that's all I thought life was about. At the age of six and seven, I was reading physics books. One of the books was called Physics is Fun. I hope that somebody has that book. It's called Physics is Fun. I think I'm going to check it out. <laughs> so I used to read that at the age of six and seven. I would read about those things, had pictures and things. That was where my passion for engineering started. I would take, take <laughs> my mother and my father <laughs> used to, <laughs> they used to say to me, why do you take a perfectly working radio and take it apart? I was passionately curious. I will take the radio apart and find out how it worked. I was seven, eight years old. I will take it apart, find out how it worked, put it back together with my parents and there, and it will work just as it was. I could fix radios at that age. Well, you, you said, I'm talking about Africa here. You know, in Africa, we mature very quickly. Life makes you grow up fast. So guess what? I used to do all those kind of things. So I was passionately curious. I would take it. And you want to hear something funny? One of the things that happened was after I was done putting some things, uh, putting it together and it worked, I had some parts left over. I just thought, oh, this must be extra parts because the radio is working just fine. <laughs> but those are the days I was, I was learning a lot of things. My life, I want to live it with passion. I want to encourage you today. I want you to go to Christlove.org and click the donate button. And please, 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 and I just encourage you to sow a seed today because if this has been a blessing to you, I want you to show me your participation. Uh, you want to, your thumbs up, your hearts, you know, your excitement. Let's make sure there's more excitement happening here. Okay. So, and also go to my YouTube channel and I want to, want you to subscribe to it. We want to hit 5,000 subscribers. Share with your friends. If this has been a blessing to you today, I want you to share this. I would like you to share this with others. And uh, share it as, with as many people as possible so that they can be blessed. And I'm talking about living life to the fullest. Living life with a passion. The passion of living full and dying empty. In other words, the hashtag is called maximized living. Or Hashtag living full or hashtag dying empty or under the hashtag with these days I'm doing hashtag folks natural brilliance or hashtag dream big or hashtag brilliant mind whatever hashtag you want to put and get this message out to somebody let me know how it is okay but I want to say thank you again for joining me tomorrow we are continuing with this amazing series called maximize living again this is yours truly, Dr. Charles, and uh, let me know how this has impacted you today. Let us go and live passionately. I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless you.